Today I'm going to be giving my honest review on Andy Weir's most popular three book series, which is The Martian, Project Hail Mary and Artemis. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Ellie, I'm currently an astrodynamicist and software engineer and I am a Cambridge mathematics graduate. I am a huge maths, physics, space tech lover and on this channel I just talk about my love for that. So hopefully if you enjoyed the video then subscribe down below for future videos like this one. Let's get stuck into it. So the reason I actually started reading Andy Weir's books was because a friend of mine recommended his books to me. I had watched the film The Martian already, which in hindsight probably wasn't the best thing to do, but I'd watched the film already, I knew about the book, but I wasn't aware that he had other books in his collection. So I just thought, what better way to start getting back into sci-fi than reading these books? I'm gonna be diving into each of the books and my honest opinions on each of them, and I'm gonna do it in the order that I read the books. So I actually started with Artemis. So the book is called Artemis and it was released in 2017. So out of the three that I'm reviewing today, it was the second release book. So The Martian was first, then this in 2017, then Project Hail Mary in 2021. So the book itself takes place in the late 2080s, I believe. And it's on Artemis, which is basically the first city on the moon which as like a, a base for the storyline, I kind of like that. I thought it was something that was more in reach, I guess. By 2080, it would be nice to think that we had a city on, on the moon. The story itself follows a protagonist called Jasmine, or Jazz, as she's referred to in the book. And essentially she is a smuggler. So her main job is a porter, but with that comes smuggling. And the reason for that is just that she has this big dream of wanting to make money. It's constantly referred to in the book that she just wants to have lots of money or slugs, which is the currency on Artemis. And for this reason, she's quite easily swayed into undertaking a legal activity in order to make money. And essentially the book itself follows this plot of her having a business deal with somebody in the book. And that's kind of the plot for the rest of the book is just her doing this business plan, this illegal activity as it were. So that's the basic plot of the book. I, I don't want to spoil it too much. As a woman in STEM myself, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm really excited to read this book because it is out of the three books, the only book that has a female protagonist. After hearing roughly what the other two books were about, I was expecting to be almost kind of like enthused by the book, be like, yeah, women in STEM, you know? Whereas I felt like the book itself, her intelligence was portrayed nicely, like she's, she's very intelligent, but I felt like that was massively overshadowed by the amount of like references to her sex life. I, w I was hoping to read a book where there would be like a strong female character where where the author didn't once refer to her appearance or her sex life or just anything aside from the fact that she is good at what she does in terms of like science. And I felt like there were a lot of times where Andy Weir would make jokes that were just a bit a bit immature and it was definitely lacking in the other two books. It felt as though just because it was a female character, those comments could be made and I didn't really like that part. The other thing to mention is Jazz herself, she is a non-practicing Muslim. So when I first started reading the book and I saw that she was a female and she was a non-practicing Muslim, I thought this is gonna be a great chance for Andy Weir to have representation in his books. I, I felt like he was slightly ignorant at times in the book and if you read the book I'm sure you'll understand what I mean but that's just in terms of the way that he wrote things, the character development and stuff like that. However the book itself, like the plot itself, I enjoyed. It was my least favourite out of the three books I must admit. It, it didn't really have a lot of science that I was enjoying per se, like it, the development of the story wasn't as enjoyable to follow as the other two books. I enjoyed the like space and science facts and I I remember like reading the book and finishing it and thinking, oh, I did, I really enjoyed that, but it wasn't after I read The Martian and Project Hail Mary that I was like, that's actually not as good as I thought it was. So in the book, there is quite a large element towards politics as well, which I did quite enjoy. I liked the start of the book where we learn about why Artemis was there, why it was founded and interspersed little moon facts, which I quite liked. But yeah, the, the book itself, I, I thought was a bit slow to get going. I enjoyed the main plot. I obviously didn't like the references that I've mentioned before. If we were to take those away, the storyline itself was, was a good storyline and I did, did enjoy it. I would give Artemis three stars and that is just because the, the character representation was a bit of a letdown. I think Andy Weir could have done so much more with it. I was a bit disappointed with that, but you'd be pleased to know that is the lowest I've rated of, of these three books. So it gets better from here on out. Okay, so next up is Project Hail Mary, which is definitely 
a much bigger book. The book itself is just under 500 pages, so in comparison to R. Smith, this is what it looks like. So it's definitely a longer read, but sometimes I find that it works the opposite way, where you have a longer book and because there's so much more detail involved in it, you end up getting more drawn into the storyline. And I think that's why I enjoyed Project Hail Mary so much, is because it had such a good storyline to it. I did really, really enjoy it. So it's definitely my favourite out of the three. It was a massive upgrade on Artemis. It wasn't really until I read Project Hail Mary that I kind of understood the hype behind Nandi Weir. I think, as I said with Artemis, I was just a bit disappointed with the book. Then I didn't really know what to expect from Project Hail Mary and I really, really enjoyed it. So the book itself is was released in 2021 and in the book we follow a protagonist called Ryland Grace who essentially wakes up on a spaceship without any knowledge of why he's there. He just wakes up and is like, uh... Um, am I supposed to be here? Who am I? What am I doing? And essentially through a series of flashbacks and uh, memory jolts and reasoning in the book, he essentially realises that he is the only chance for Earth to survive. So for, for humankind to survive. It's a really well-written book. The narrative is kind of separated into two parts. You have the here and now where he is on his spaceship and he's undertaking experiments and he's uh, trying to navigate to uh, a certain star let's say uh, i don't want to spoil too much of the book there's also the part where he has his flashbacks which is previous uh ryan and grace and he's actually a teacher so he teaches young kids and i kind of like the the kind of references to him being a teacher and at the end there's a really nice reference to to him being a teacher as well and i, I really really like that but in terms of the story being split up you obviously have him now here and now and then the memory flashbacks that he has and i i loved how the progression in the book brought those two together so well and I remember like gasping at one point being like oh my gosh it all makes sense now and up until that point you kind of left in suspense of like what why on earth is he on this spaceship like what what is he doing here and how did he actually get there that was the biggest thing for me was once I'd understood why he was there I was so confused with how on earth he got there because the that the pages were getting kind of thinner towards the end and I was like what but yeah, once once I found out why he was there, or like how he got there, that was that was quite a big big shock for me in the in the book. I really liked the book. The book itself definitely had more of the maths and physics that I enjoy. The, the spaceship itself, yeah, it works on on a centrifuge essentially. So you learn about the kind of the effects of gravity in a centrifuge, and I really like that side of the maths and physics because that's my background. But what I really liked as well was there was so much reference to biology and chemistry because Ryland Grace himself, without spoiling too much, he has a background in biochemistry as it were. So I learned a lot about that as well and, and there were parts in the book where things would happen and you'd be like, why is this happening? And then it's something related to biochemistry, let's say. And then your brain clicks and I'm like, oh my gosh, of course. I haven't done biology or chemistry since I was 16. So yeah, it's quite nice to, to read a book where you kind of get a bit of a refresher on things like evolution, which is quite nice. But I like that because for me, I obviously loved the physics part because I understood that more so, but I loved also learning something new with the with the science side of things, which was nice. If you're not interested in the science side of things, the book itself is a is a really good read. Project Hail Mary itself is written very similar to The Martian. So this is something that Andy Weir gets a lot of complaints about. When you deviate between the different books, so when you, you move between the books, it's very clear that his writing style is, is kind of concrete. I finished reading Project Hail Mary with the narrative of, of Ryland Grace and, and learning about him. And then I started reading The Martian, which I'll get onto in a minute. And I was like, this is written exactly the same way. So I think a lot of people complain about, okay, Project Hail Mary is just The Martian. It's just Mark Watney, who's the main protagonist in The Martian. Yeah, there's a bit of com complaints there, but that's why I'm so glad I read Project Hail Mary first because personally it was my favourite. I really, really enjoyed the book. It was one that I kind of couldn't really put down. There were some parts where I was like, I just want to keep reading it. And I think it was the book that took me the least amount of time to read, even though it's the longest. Yeah, so I'd give this, I think, probably like 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really, really enjoyed it. I think as well, because I haven't read a lot of science fiction, I don't want to give it 5 stars and then read another sci-fi book and be like, oh, this is 
not that good because obviously like I read Artemis and I thought Artemis was good and then I read Project Hail Mary and I was like Artemis is not good oh it's not that good it's not as good so I'm reluctant to give it five stars but I did did really really enjoy it okay so the last one is The Martian which is arguably Andy Weir's most famous book which is quite funny because Project Hail Mary actually has better star reviews than The Martian obviously The Martian was turned into a film. So talking about the film, I'd watched the film before I'd read the book. That was definitely a mistake on my part. If I'm honest, the book and the film are very similar, very, very similar. There are certain parts that are missed out, but I remember reading parts in the book and I could see the actor or the, the character in the film saying it because I kind of got halfway in and I was like, oh, this book is literally just the same as the film. But there is something at the end where they removed that from the film. So that was kind of nice to add. Something a bit new in the book. But yeah, I do wish I'd read the book before I watched the film because I didn't get as much suspense because I kind of knew what was going to happen. But it was really, really well written and I really enjoyed it. I haven't actually explained the, <laughs> the plot of the book. The protagonist himself is called Mark Watney and essentially he is sent on a mission to Mars with a few other astronauts and they're there to just kind of collect samples of the dirt, do experiments, and then they get sent back. And what happens is there is this huge sandstorm and essentially Mark Watney gets hit in the sandstorm and every one of the astronauts thinks he's dead. So they leave him on Mars uh, and they go on their return trip to Earth. And he hasn't actually died. He ends up making it back to kind of the base camp on Mars, which is known as the Hab. And he's, he's alive and he has to figure out a way to survive on Mars. He is a botanist and a mechanical engineer, which arguably probably the two most best things that you could be while on Mars. So he has to figure out how to make food, how to make food last. and when he would ever get back to Earth because they send trips to Mars every four years. You'd have to find a way to live for four years in a base camp that's last to work for like 30 days, I think it is. So the story itself looks into him uh, as the protagonist and how he survives on Mars and, and what he has to do during the early stages while he's thinking up this plan of how to live, uh, how to survive, should I say. There are satellites obviously orbiting Mars and they have noticed that things are moving on Mars. So they know he's alive. He doesn't know that they know he's alive back at NASA. So it's this communication between the, the two sides. Yeah, it is It is a really, really good book. Like I said, I, I, it's very similar to the to the movie. So if you enjoyed the movie, then you'd probably enjoy the book as well. Yeah, it was, it was a really good book. In terms of the science side of things, I really enjoyed. I thought it was well written in that sense. I learned quite a lot from it, which was nice. I think it, it was, I want to say it was less in depth than Project Hail Mary, but I don't know if that's just because Project Hail Mary was longer. But yeah, I really liked the science side of things because he's a botanist, so you learn about trying to grow things on Mars and then mechanical engineer, so he's trying to fix the hab and, and do all these different things. And I really, really liked that aspect of the book. I also liked that it was set on Mars. The story of Project Hail Mary right now is not possible, whereas The Martian, I I see it as kind of a thing that could happen in the future where we have teams going to Mars, kind of like we'd have teams go to the moon with the actual Artemis mission that we have. I like that aspect of it. I felt like when I was reading, I was like, I can imagine this actually happening in real life um, or maybe in a, in a few years time. That was something else I enjoyed was when I was reading the book, it didn't feel too far-fetched. And obviously a lot of people like science fiction because it is crazy ideas that, you know, science can sort of back up. Whereas this book was something that we kind of know could happen. So I like that aspect, but then I also really liked Project Hail Mary because it was something that isn't currently possible, but the, the thought process behind how things work with what they're given, I really liked. So if you're somebody that prefers to read books that are kind of more out there, theories rather than, okay, this could happen, Project Hail Mary definitely is more for you. If you like to read books that are probably possible in the future then The Martian is also probably the book that you'd, that you'd want to read. So yeah I'd give The Martian oh, probably can I do like 0.2 I don't know like 4.2 out of 5. I don't want to give it the same as Project Hail Mary because I preferred Project Hail Mary but it is a really good book maybe like 4.3. Again I don't want to give it five stars because I, I think there'll probably be books that I prefer more so. So yeah that was it that's the the rating of Andy Weir's most popular three book collection. So I bought this bundle together actually. So I will put a link to the entire bundle and then the individual books separately in both the comment section and the description section. So if you're interested in reading any of those books, then you can head to those links and, and get them. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, then please like, subscribe and comment and I'll see you all in the next one.